Hey everybody, it's Becky from Power Tools with Fred. Today is Saturday, February 23rd, 2019, and I'm in my sewing room all day long. So excited. Um, of course, I'm in my sewing room a lot anyway, but my husband just went to go play in the dirt. <laughs> we had about 20 loads of road base delivered for our RV storage lot, and he just went to go spread it. So, uh, we only opened last May of 2018, and by January of 2019, we were full. What a blessing that is, because that's a little supplement to our retirement. So, anyway, you guys didn't hear, you know, tune in to hear me go on about dirt. <laughs> I wanted to show you what I've been working on. Um, one of you uh, made a comment and said, oh, did I miss the tunic? Please point me to the video. No, you did not miss the tunic. I um, I work full-time outside the home. I do cybersecurity for the U.S. Air Force. I'm a federal civilian. And um, so, you know, I get up at 4.30 in the morning. Actually, I get up at 3.30 in the morning now because I'm studying for an exam I'm going to take hopefully in April. And um, I can't study in the evenings because, you know, what's for dinner kind of thing. Um, and so I don't sew very fast. My day is full with work. I have, I spend about an hour and, um, about an hour and 20 minutes maybe in the car coming and going. All together, not each way. It's not like DC or anything like that. And uh, so usually when I get home, if I do anything in the sewing room at all, it's not that much, but the majority of my sewing I get done, especially for garments. Quilting is different. But for garments, I do those on the weekends for the most part. Um, quilting is different because it's pretty easy to sit down and stitch a quarter inch seam and just go and know where your pieces are and follow those directions. I, to me, that's easy. Um, sewing, I'm slow. I'm a slow seamstress. I always have been. I check and I double check and I triple check and then I screw it up and then I start over. So that's <laughs> You know, Viv Mom and Joy, they just knock it out. And uh, that's not me. I, I just don't. So, um, so let me show you. My last video, I showed you how I was making the piping. You guys, it turned out so pretty. I'm really pleased with it. Bodice front. Here's the placket. Can you see? Look. I am so pleased with it. How it turned out. It's going to fit me like this. I am not a fan of the collar that the book wants to uh, put in on this particular placket style. And so I'm going to refashion the collar. That's another reason I slow very slowly is because a lot of times I don't like stuff. And then I go, well, let me redo that and fix it another way. So it takes me a little while to figure out the pattern and redraft and all of that stuff. But I'll tell you, this turned out so perfect. You know why? Steema seam. I put steema seam once I folded in the hem of the uh, folded in the edge of the placket, five eighths inch, like it said to. Um, then I put steema seam on the underside of the pink on the placket, and then I placed the piping exactly where it needed to go and I glued it in place before I stitched it and so you can't you can't see it on the back because it's enclosed now that I flipped it over and stitched it at the point here I cut out um, a little you know divot to allow it to fold and, and give it some room to move so it would, didn't have a bubble under there and then here at these points I just put a snip up to the stitching and kind of let it overlap itself a little bit on that on that angle. And y'all, it looks factory. Love it. So I'm still working on my tunic. It's fitting Betsy McCall pretty good, so I'm pretty happy about that. And um, right now, this morning, so I, I did that first thing this morning. And then um, I told you guys I was going to do some embroidery for my Daughters of the American Revolution chapter. And they all showed up in mass last week or this month at our meeting. 
and handed me all kind of black blouses. <laughs> and um, so I've done one. Can you see that? And there's two. And there's three. And there's another one on the embroidery machine. And there's a, a three more behind me in a bag on the, uh, right here. I got three more to go. So, that's keeping me busy. I've also got some patches to make. Uh, my husband works with a guy who wanted to have some patches made for, um, I guess, somebody who started their bowling league years and years, 20, 30 years ago, passed away, and they wanted a patch with his initials on it. So uh, I think I'm going to use the seven needle embroidery machine for that, just so it's a little bit faster to knock them out. But I've never done patches before, so I know Urban Threads has a really good uh, tutorial on it. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit. You guys haven't even seen the seven needle embroidery machine we have. It's a Janome MB7. And uh, it works pretty good. I prefer the interface of the brother, but the brother was like, ching, ching, you know. I had to paint it, but my husband. So, I don't know. Oh, while I was redoing my sewing room, you guys, I found a backing that I had been missing for a quilt I made. I was digging around, and I was like, oh, look, yay! And then I was like, what do I do with the top? <laughs> I knew I was missing this backing. And um, here it is. It's another Via Rosa quilt designs um, quilt that I made. So here it is. And uh, I'm really happy with it. Matter of fact, this square right here, this one right here, that is the backing. That's the same fabric as the backing. And it's just another simple, you know, two and a half inch squares and sew them all together and simple simple pattern and uh, I'm real happy with how it turned out it's gonna look perfect in my living room you know like I told y'all here at my main house everything is brown but um, what else is going on I got my new cutting table yay my husband is such a sweetheart you know I told him I said Keith I really, really want this cutting table, uh, the inspiration I had seen on YouTube. Somebody redid their craft room, their paper crafters, and ugh, all the stuff she had. But she had a split-level cutting table. or that uh, I don't think it was a cutting table. I think that's where she crafted, but I needed a cutting table. And um, I priced it all at Ikea, and it was with delivery, which was $80, bucks, okay, uh, $300. And I just couldn't, you know, I just couldn't. I don't know, because it looked pretty simple. And so we went to Home Depot in Seguin, Texas, and uh, um, I found a guy, Brian, and had him cut the wood the, the size that I wanted. And my husband, um, I'm going to turn the camera here in a minute and show you guys. And I just absolutely love this thing. Um, I will tell you, so the plywood was $21 a sheet, and I have two of them. The dowel for the legs in between the two sheets was $4, $4 I think, okay? And then the racks under the, uh, the bottom were, I think they were $15 each, $13 each, and then the... Um, the little bins, the colored fabric bins that go in each one, uh, they were five eighty six. So I spent forty dollars on the bins. I got one of each color, and um, I found my label maker. Yay! So I labeled my bins of what's in them. So that's a big help too. I also labeled my drawers on the Alex drawers in my sewing room here. Because I just kept opening and closing. Open. I, did a, I did a sewing room makeover last month. And, um, or beginning of February, I think. It was the beginning of this month. I did a sewing room makeover, and I haven't been able to find a thing. And so many of you were like, you need to label your drawers. Well, you're right. And I did. And uh, I bought a brother label maker a couple of years ago down in Port O'Connor at a uh, yard sale. 
for like 15 bucks and it works perfect and I love it so matter of fact where's it at oh it's a nice one runs on batteries so I bring it in here and I just tell it what size you know what I just type out what I need and hit print and cut me really simple okay let's get to my new cutting table so I can show you the magic how cool this is so here it is <clears throat> I'm gonna put some pictures at the end of my husband putting this thing together and Brian from Home Depot at the end of this clip this is the second time I've taken this video because it didn't record last time I think my chip was full so I took all the movies that was on there um, that were on there and moved them over to my laptop so here it is it's got two layers of sorry guys two layers of um, plywood okay with dowels in between it is so so sturdy I don't know if you noticed when I was cutting the piping that my poor um, table looked like it was going to fall apart. I have the racks underneath. I wanted them specifically apart to be able to hold this Ikea rack. Yes, I still need to get the caster. <laughs> I still have a block holding that one. <laughs> <clears throat> but under here, I have my yellow rulers on this side, my quilting rulers. And over here, I have... Uh, my clear rulers, which is one quilting ruler and then a French curve and my SureFit designed rulers. And in here I have some things I use. Uh, that teddy bear can is my glue gun. And there's just a lot of stuff in here. And <clears throat> these are my hoops, my machine embroidery uh, placement guides, lots of stuff like that. And then in this one down here are all of my stabilizers that I have. And um, there's my dog. <laughs> she has to come out and make noise while I'm doing this. And then down in here, <clears throat> this is all my cone thread for my serger. Okay. So, <clears throat> I just love this thing. I was able to, I'm surprised I was able just to get up off the ground right there. And so I've got my boxes labeled now. Isn't that great? And I know what is in it. Do you mind? <laughs> Crazy dog. <laughs> um, so look at the little uh, pin cushion I just made. I got that thimble cup in the mail the other day. I saw it in a video that Jenny was doing, and I was like, oh, that's so cute that she made that into a... a pin cushion so I had to do the same it's just some batting scraps wrapped in fabric and I put a hot glue put it in there with a hot glue gun and those are my uh, my pattern weights and whatnot so anyway yeah this is uh, this is my new cutting table and I already have all the bins full of course um, I'm still working on the nook corner back here for the uh, <clears throat> the thread racks and whatnot but I just wanted to show it to you guys I absolutely love it and it is Super sturdy. I just rattled it. It doesn't go anywhere. Let me show you underneath real quick. So, my husband drilled holes into the wood, through the wood, for these to sit up. They don't go over the top. And then I just took a piece of white tape and stuck it over the hole. Can't see it. Don't care. Works great. Looks fine. <clears throat> Got the whole thing including the bins, including the bins. Uh, I, you know what? I didn't price out the bins on the Ikea ones, so uh, let's see, 40, 45, plus 30, $75. Got myself one heck of a cutting table. Absolutely love it. The dimensions were built based on this cutting mat. This is, let me move the remote. <clears throat> This is, I wanted a one-piece cutting mat. I've wanted one for years and picked it up at the show, uh, the Houston Quilt Show last November. That's what it is right there. If any of you, I know um, Kay had said she wanted to get a full-size cutting mat. I'm tired of button up the green ones together. 
Okay, guys, so that's it for this. Okay, so I'm going to give credit where credit's due and put in some pictures at the end of this and show you my husband doing his thing, putting this together, and some pictures of Brian from Home Depot. I had his permission to put him in here. So uh, this has been a great experience, and I just absolutely love my new cutting table. So my next project is the thread racks, and I still have to work on an ironing station. Anyway, I will talk to you guys later. You guys go sew something, okay? Bye.